Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So here I'm going to walk you guys through how to use the goodness of fit test on Excel. And this is this is this version of Excel I'm using is actually Excel 2016. So either way, it should work for all versions quite fine. Now the variables we need here all depends on the chi-squared formula. Okay, so let's write down the chi-squared formula here. So the chi-squared formula is defined as the sum, or at least the goodness of fit test as the sum of the actual values, i.e. the number you have minus the expected values all squared over the expected okay and this depends on your variable size and it counts for the total number okay now this is what we're going to work with so in this case we can see that the cons i use here represents a the actual values and e is what we need the expected values and with this we can actually then work out our observation which is going to be this which is going to be the q obs the q obs is going to be over here and this is going to be literally the entire equation which is a minus e squared over e okay so let's go right into it so in this case um, what is our sample size so let's calculate the calculate sample size is pretty much everybody and here we use the count function so you press you press co and ou if you see the variable press tab and then just highlight how many variables there are this counts the sample size and tells us we have 12 exactly okay now the sum would be the sum total of all of this. Again, you press equal, type the word sum, and you have to pretty much add up all these values. This is going to be useful to calculate the expected variable. Okay? Because I've set a known alternative, so this is what you need. You need to find a uh, set of a known alternative hypothesis. I said that the known is that all probabilities are equal. An alternative meaning not all probabilities are equal. So we're going to go under the assumption of the known. Since all properties are equal and we have 12 variables, each property must have 1 over 12. So you can say equals 1 over this variable. So that's, yeah, it's about this value here. You can stretch it out depending on how you want. As for degrees of freedom, this is always going to be um, calculated as um, n minus the number of, of um, variables a column used. In this case, our n variable is a sample and we're going to subtract it by 1 because we're only dealing with cons, one only variable. If we, had, if we had more options like cons and something else, then we divide, then we subtract by 2 and so on. Now lastly, q obs and chi-squared. This is obtained from the chi-squared table, so we're going to get to that in a second. As for q obs, well, that's over here. That's pretty much all of this. Now let's, let's solve this. So the probability, firstly, is going to be all of these guys. Oops. It's going to be all of these guys. And uh, what you want to do is you want to press F4 because you want to lock the cell. Okay, and then you just... Hit this double tap this bottom right corner and all of this happens. Now the expected value is simply going to be the probability times um, the sample the total sample size. So it's going to be the sum. And of course um, you're going to notice that it's all going to be the same value. So again you could lock all these cells, highlight, press F4 to lock it down because you you're going to stick with these these cells. Actually this one you don't need to really lock. You don't need to lock C3 because um, you're going to go down with it. And yeah, you get 54.6. Now, all you do, Q obs simply uses formula. So you do A minus E squared, so cons minus expected, all squared divided by E. So put, plug in the formula. You can put this minus that, all squared. So hold on, let me put my phone down. Squared. And then you're going to divide all this. So you probably put an extra bracket around. So, bracket here, bracket there, divided by the expected, so not this one, the one above, over D3, and done. So, you're going to get a value around zero, depending on how close the actual and expected values are. So, drag it down and, okay, just, just let it do its thing. Yep, and that's it. Now, all you want to do is pretty much sum up these Q-Obs, because that's what the sum says. And here we are, here is our variable. And now we compare this against the table. And because we did it, remember, we're gonna compare it against this, which is um, the chi-squared um, at with 11 degrees of freedom. And we're gonna pick a significance level. I'm just gonna say 5% because it's easy. And now lastly, for the chi-squared value here, simply, if your observed value is bigger than this value, then we can comfortably say that we can reject the null. Not comfortably, but that is the that is the empirical evidence we need. So now flick over to your your table value. So let's open up our tables. So where is it? Here we are. So here is the the values of chi squared. 
okay and over here let's have a look so here we need to solve oh yeah so this is the diagram that represents if your chi-square value which is the table value over here this is the mark is if your observed value is bigger than the chi-square value in the table then you reject so search at 11 cross reference to 0 0.05 and you got 19.675 guys so literally copy that paste it in and voila you can see the observe is bigger so then your conclusion is simply going to be there is not enough evidence to reject the null hold on let me flip the formula and the formula is literally being a bit silly There we go. There is enough evidence to reject the known. So the average electric, electric energy consumption per month is statistically significant. If it was the other way around, suppose um, this was um, smaller, let's just make it up, say 18, then our conclusion would be there is not enough evidence. And that's it, guys. I hope this video helped. And um, let me know if you've got any other questions. And um, hopefully this demonstration got you to what you need to know. So again, this only works for single column ones. If you have other variables, then your degrees of freedom will be subtracted by the number of variables you're actually dealing with. But yeah, that's it. And uh, see you guys soon. Ciao.